students so this is the continuation of the environmental issues second topic that is uh, water pollution and its control as soon as we take the word pollution you what have been studied in your uh, lower classes regarding the pollution here what more extra we do we say this is not the problem of today's it is the problem of men many days we can uh, tell uh, why the problem is increasing even today why it is not getting less uh, because uh, of the human activities only when if we see this picture we feel how uh, dirty it is uh, this dirty is made by human only by us only it is so very dirty so because of this uh, many diseases start spreading as or no see look at the picture only we feel so clumsy how to use water but uh, water is a important uh, resource for life uh, without water no organism can survive not we can we can also cannot survive so why to, to have, how to avoid this water pollution how to get it into a control in the place where we live so how to control it and to control also there are many researches going on there are case study especially in second pc topic you'll be learning a certain case study to prevent the water pollution so that is more important regarding water pollution water pollutant you would have been learned but here what extra will we learn to bring an awareness from the uh, children of your age and also how to control how the controlling steps are being adapted in uh, our days so this all we will be learning in this topic so the important source of water are which are the important source of water such as oceans seas inland water like pond lakes streams rivers etc you know that that is water is an important indispensable material for life man requires water for what all purpose for drinking purpose domestic purpose irrigation and also for industrial use due to increase in the industrialization okay as the Uh, need of the man increases uh, uh, the product increases the one of so one of the raw materials also can be the water so in uh, due to increase in the industrialization the demand for water is increasingly uh, daily daily it is increasing like anything so water pollution is one of the old aged problem but today due to the increased activities like uh, sewage disposal might be nuclear test might be disposal of industrial effluents might be use of uh, fertilizers uh, pesticides uh, in the insecticides uh, in the agricultural field when it uh, rains what happens the water get uh, washed off from the fields and enter into the river bed or into the pond or into the lake again uh, we drink that water again that toxication accumulates in our body so this is nothing but the Uh, pollution only water pollution only this is a reason for water pollution we can tell so man has polluted most of the water sources that water i am telling so in uh, before and all we used to have wells now there are no wells only many wells are being closed also uh, near uh, the houses in the villages also uh, many wells are being closed because there will be pot, uh, water channels are been uh, implanted under the uh, soil and uh, they try to uh, supply the water so because of this also Uh, many wells uh, are being uh, closed as such but still uh, most of the villages they will be dependent on the river water which is been flowing uh, now see coming to the uh, cities means they will be having drainage system uh, in villages and all drainage system may not be there there might be pit system also in uh, some places in uh, some places what happen in our places also uh, what happens gutter is there the sewage water domestic water uh, household domestic uh, water Uh, it releases into the gutter from the gutter it moves into the river bed he is there in the uh, villages okay in the villages the, is there a water plant treatment in the city sites it is there water plant treatment and but in villages water plant treatment is not there so what happened directly we are throwing our own waste into the water and as it flows it will become clear water the waste which is been dumped will get settled down but it will not get eradicated it gets settled down i am telling again we use the same water so spreading of disease is merely in front of us that what is happening so water pollution how do we define it uh, to be after telling so much what do you tell about water pollution water pollution is defined as an uh, 
undesirable change in water making it unfit for the human consumption and for the survival of the aquatic fauna and flora what is fauna and flora you know what is fauna animals flora the plants so uh, such water which is unfit for the survivability of the flora fauna and the human being is said to be the water pollution okay so the first topic under the water pollution and its uh, control is uh, domestic okay coming to the uh, first topic under the water pollution that is uh, domestic sewage and industrial effluence now what is the domestic sewage i think so in the 10th chapter of uh, microbes in human welfare also you have learned uh, regarding the uh, treatment of the sewage water and all what is sewage and all so let us recall uh, that and how far it pollutes the water is a study over here so sewage it is nothing but a liquid waste uh, disposed from uh, urban cities municipalities hospitals and sanitaria so it contains what all it might contain hi you know very well that is it contains the fecal matter urine it and uh, waste uh, detergents uh, disease producing bacteria it uh, contain viruses parasites uh, x of parasites uh, cyst of parasites etc most of these components of sewage are biodegradable and they are quite harmful effects it can be removed except the detergent microorganism might be removed can we remove the detergents uh, like uh, Uh, most of the phosphates and nitrates which flow from even the agriculture farm lands also you cannot eradicate it uh, bdt all those things no it get uh, sustained inside the water such a uh, horrible is a removal of those uh, pollutant uh, i can tell you the sewage which will be disposed from the hospitals uh, nursing home sanitary is uh, contain disease producing germs like bacteria virus i told no x of the parasites it will contaminate our water mass so now the contaminated water is water is usually harmful for human health as it increases the susceptibility of the disease like what all the disease might occur in from through water such as the typhoid para typhoid bacillary dysenteries amoebosis hepatitis cholera even polio so due to this many rivers in india you know that uh, and abroad also they have prohibited for human use why they have prohibited means because it has started spreading disease human uh, if we start consuming such water will the population uh, will uh, retain as such by that only many people will die so uh, some of the government have taken a step uh, for uh, some of the rivers are been banned in used for example uh, jamuna near delhi ganga at kanapur gomati at lucknow hugli at kolkata then kaveri also at tamil nadu are some of the examples you know of sewage polluted rivers here so here uh, i'm trying to tell you how far by the man waste which is domestic waste or the industrial uh, output by this uh, how far the water is getting polluted so the source of uh, the pollution water pollution is main is uh, domestic sewage so here i have given a reading what is a reading here we have given means if, if the water is 100% okay if we consider solvent as a 100% in that you know, you know 0.1% if you in a drinking water also which flows in the uh, river bed if it is examined in that 0.1% impurities will be present in water that is uh, by which by what is the source of that 0.1 impurities in water means by the domestic sewage which is unfit for human use they include what all it contains means it contains the uh, suspended solids uh, such as sand silt and the clay then uh, colloidal uh, materials uh, such as the uh, fecal matter bacteria the cloth uh, paper fibers etc then dissolved materials means nutrients like nitrate uh, ammonia phosphate uh, sodium uh, calcium etc 
so this is a toxicity filter or the impurities that is 0.1 impurities will be present in water which is made out of that impurities is nothing but by the domestic sewage here this is a graphical representation i can tell you to so, this is explained uh, to show that the effect of sewage discharge on some important characteristic of a river now we will think here i'll first explain this graph for you then i will talk about the bod here okay so see here so this is this part of black color you can see this there we are trying to show you the flow of the river water see so here this is the river water it's flowing fine now when the river water is flowing here what happened you uh, discharge here is a pipe the sewage is being discharged here at this point so at this point when a sewage is discharged the water is clean itself here sewage is discharged so you can see here the black color as soon as the sewage is discharged you can see the black color appearance here so when this nutrient i mean we tell the effluent when it is in i mean released into the when the sewage effluent which is black in color even in a, in the some of your areas gutter you can see the black color water when it enters into the river bed at one side what might be happen at this point the concentration of the uh, what uh, pollutant increases when the concentration of the pollutant means i told it uh, just in the another slide i have showed you what are the pollutant nitrate phosphate ammonia all this content uh, uh, the sewage flow which becomes black in color it, uh, the impurities the concentration as it increases as it increases you can see here there is uh, two lines that is one is uh, pink and one is blue so the blue color represents bod here can you see bod that is biochemical oxygen demand what it is biochemical oxygen demand okay now the pink color is dissolved oxygen which is present in the water clear so this is the diagram now i'll explain observe so as the sewage water is released here so here i have shown you the flow of the water here above so as it release what happened fish will uh, survive the fish will be killed and disappearance of the clean water organism why the clean water organism will die why it will die as soon as the sewage is inserted here the oxygen level will fall when the oxygen level falls the fishes and other water organism will die at this point okay at this point the water organism will die as soon as there is a, a release of what the sewage as soon as there is a release of the sewage all the water organism die they die because as the concentration here increases the bod level also will increase can you see this blue color here bod is increased at this point why because due to the increase in the concentration so here blue color line shows an uh, like an uh, mountain appearance indicating there is increase in the bod bod means biochemical oxygen demand oxygen demand increases means oxygen availability is not there so the organism die now as the water starts flowing 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 some of the impurities get deposited down in the water and as it moves goes on moving you can see there will be clear water so when there is reappearance of the clear water you can see here so it has come to the ash color then it has become clear water so when it comes to the clear water here what happened the water organism will not die why it will not die means the blue line decreases bod uh, uh, demand decreases whereas dod that is dissolved oxygen 
demand increases so when the dissolved oxygen increases here the organism will leave are you understanding when bod increases organism die that means without oxygen organism dies when the water becomes clear dissolved oxygen increases and organism will become alive so this shows the flow of the river water here Okay, only one thing you understand. So when the sewage water is left here, the fishes, all the organism will die because there is no oxygen. So that is a measurement of BOD. That is a demand of the oxygen increases. So as the water flows, the water becomes clear here. So the dissolved oxygen, if it is present, BOD decreases. So when there is presence of oxygen, the organism will live. So here it dies here. You can see it dies here. It is living. So this is explained to understand the flow of uh, uh, sewage discharge and the impurities, how far it will kill an organism. So that what here. So removal of this uh, dissolved uh, materials, organic compounds and toxic metal ions are very difficult, most difficult task. So domestic sewage contain a biodegradable, that is biodegradable, I have told you, microorganisms such as bacteria, virus, fungi, all those can be removed, organic matter. It is decomposed by the microorganism. So the amount of biodegradable organic matter in sewage water will be estimated by the presence of water BOD. If there is more organism, I mean, organisms are uh, surviving and they are existing means BOD level is low. If there are organism having a death means if the BOD level is uh, increased, that means organisms are undergoing death. So it is an index to tell the rate of water pollution in a waterbed. Next, you, here you can see the effect of the uh, water pollution. What is the effect of the water pollution means? The first effect of the water pollution is uh, nothing but uh, that of the algal bloom. So what is uh, algal bloom or we also call it as algal scum such as. So here you can see in this picture uh, the algae which is grown on the water and also children are playing in this. In this there are two pictures. Here you can see full the growth of the algae. Here also the water is covered completely by the algae growth. Okay. So these two pictures uh, represents the algal blue. Okay. So during the biodegradation, what happens? Microorganisms consume the oxygen which is present in the water. It results in a sharp decline of the dissolved oxygen. I told you know in the upper layer of the water as the algae goes on forming the whole uh, water bed, the lake or the pond below what happens it will become completely dark due to the increase in the impurities most of the organism will die. So that what we are trying to tell the dissolved oxygen which is present in the water will decrease. This causes water death of the aquatic organism. Then the presence of more and more nutrients, that is impurities, but what we call it as the nutrients in water, it will cause the excessive growth of the planktonic algae, which we refer to be as a algal bloom. So this is the algal bloom which you are seeing in the picture. It imparts water if algae is grown throughout the lake, if you go that side, would have been experienced uh, in surrounding uh, of our river bed and the lakes also. If one side of the river or the lake it is covered by uh, merely by the algae, it will start stinking. That is distinct uh, uh, color will uh, the it will impart the distinct color of the water body, and uh, you can find the foul smell. The death of the fishes might be organism might be a very uh, uh, stinking smell only I can tell. So such things uh, we can uh, see and that water is not suitable for consumption. 
ensano the water bodies and it deteriorates the water quality resulting in the death of the fishes some uh, bloom forming algae are extremely toxic to the human beings and also for the animals so, so this what we call it as algal scum okay it is regarding uh, what is that algal bloom okay secondly the growth of water ice nest this i have said you before also see one uh, year you can see only so much Uh, the water is seen here we don't understand whether there is a presence of a lake here or not regarding water rhesus or acornia carpaces i have already told you this was not our uh, uh, species it was uh, a species of uh, some other uh, country and it was brought and introduced in india okay where especially in bengal it seems that they have introduced because it has a very beautiful flowers and uh, it grows very abundantly and it covers complete lake one side of the lake uh, if it is introduced by uh, 15 days or 10 days we can come and see we will search where is the lake so far it will get spread so water rice nest is the most uh, problematic aquatic weed here It is called as terror of Bengal. They grow abundantly in the eutrophic uh, water bodies. It we need not to be grown. It uh, spreads itself and it starts growing. Uh, such a weed it is, which is unwanted. As you can see, if it covers a whole lake here in this picture, can we imagine the whole lake below? It will become complete dark. There is no sunlight. There is no dissolved oxygen. again we can tell almost all the fishes or aquatic organism will die and here in bengal what happened they are mostly fish eating people so when they were dependent upon the indigenous fishes okay their cultivation is fishery usually for some of them so they were dependent upon the fish that is inland fishes so this plant which acquired the whole lake and all the fishes died so it become nearly problematic for the all the fishermen who are dependent on that for their livelihood and that's why it is called as terror of bengal okay then in second picture you can see here there is a flow of a river water and here there is a flow of what see under channel they have done from some factory and it is flowing here what is this a sewage water now this sewage water joins this river bed and what happens the whole river will get polluted this uh, sewage i mean this is a industrial effluent which is been left into the river bed so when the industrial waste is left what all substances it might uh, be having it has a ddt powder heavy metals like mercury cadmium can, copper lead etc which are very dangerous for the uh, human and also some of the organic compounds it has which are merely not uh, uh, applicable for the water or such water cannot be uh, consumed by the human being or the animals also organism aquatic organism will also not survive because there will be decrease in the oxygen in such water so this sewage from the homes and hospitals will contain maximum pathogens they cause i told you know diseases such as dysentery typhoid jaundice and cholera also even typhoid uh, para typhoid also i told you so this all even sometime with an increase status of uh, some of the um, pollutants uh, it may cause even uh, polio when it is drunk by the uh, children uh, it is said so this all were the effects of uh, um, water pollution we can tell okay now the next effect is uh, Uh, biological magnification that is bio magnification water is a important source of uh, uh, for the uh, all the living organism so we are all dependent on water now when there is increase in the accumulation of the toxicants uh, toxicants means they are nearly poisons uh, such as mercury and the ddt powder if it enters into our tropic 
different levels of a food chain so in a ecosystem i have explained if a environment has to be stable if a ecosystem has to be stable the all the organisms has to be stable in a food chain because each uh, level of the organism in a food chain is dependent on another level of the uh, organism in a food chain so here what happens when we are dependent upon the producers uh, that is uh, in the water body that is phytoplankton this phytoplankton or the plants in the water body get accumulated with this uh, mercury and the ddt powder so these plants are eaten by the zooplankton so this zooplankton also the food i mean uh, the poisoned whatever till the toxic and ddt powder will enter into the zooplankton these zooplanktons are eaten by small fishes and again this toxic and the a chemical will enter into small fishes the small fishes eaten by large fishes the toxicants or the pollutants will enter into largest fishes largest fishes are eaten by the birds or all human beings also right so in this way the toxic will enter into the tropic level of a food chain from the producers up to the consumer tertiary consumer so this what we call it as biomagnification so definition i think so you have understood it is the accumulation of the toxicants at successive tropic level of a food chain so that what we call it as what do we call it as biomagnification Okay. so organism cannot metabolize or excrete the toxicant organism when it uh, is eaten it uh, adheres inside its body when it adheres inside its body it cannot uh, excrete it will not come through its fecal matter or it cannot excrete the uh, toxicant so it is passed on to the uh, next tropic level so when that uh, tropic level organism is eaten by another tropic level organism in this way the chemical or the toxicants moves from one tropic level to another tropic level in a successive food chain okay in a successive tropic levels of a food chain it starts moving so that what we call it as biomagnification okay so the next one uh, a biomagnification of uh, example this is uh, ddt in an aquatic food chain so here see here one example uh, uh, given here which is also in your textbook the in a water okay in this water content this is the uh, producers these are producers okay so this uh, producers that is uh, phytoplankton Uh, the water is having how much 0.003 ppb okay now when this is uh, consumed by the zooplankton the zooplankton has nearly how much uh, 0.04 ppm okay 0.04 ppm and uh, next that uh, zooplankton are consumed by the small fishes the small fishes will be having how much 0.5 ppm now when these are consumed by the large fishes the large fishes uh, has in its body nearly 2 ppm of ddt powder when this large fishes are eaten by a bird the bird has nearly 25 ppm at it parts per million the ddt concentration here increases as the chemical or a toxicant increases as it moves from the lower tropic level to higher tropic level which is an a main example for the biomagnification okay it goes up to the 
25 ppm in this uh, uh, sorry uh, 5 ppm uh, uh, actually in the birds and if uh, this larger fish are consumed by, by human also in the human also we can see 5 ppm would have been retained in its body which is not good what does the ddt powder will do in our body ddt will disturb the cat calcium metabolism in the birds which may causes uh, thinning of uh, egg shells okay and their premature uh, breaking it causes a decline in the bird population this is regarding the uh, bird half uh, aquatic food chain so ddt is a very dangerous toxicant when it enters into the food chain most of the organisms may die so the next effect is eutrophication what is eutrophication uh, just like a succession i can tell you so see here this is before and this is after now this how it occurred how does this occur it is explained here in this uh, drawing you can see here uh, this drawing so it is eutrophication what is the definition actually it is a natural aging of a lake by nutrient enrichment so here in a young lake water is cold and clear with like a streams draining into the lake introduced of the nutrients such as nitrogen phosphate etc it increases the lake's fertility when the lake fertility increases you can see uh, there will be growth of the shallow uh, plants also at the edges can you see so shallow plants uh, will start growing here later you can see the algae growing throughout the uh, lake body here it is grown throughout the lake body the algae in this way the total water body will get uh, accumulated by the plants and this area will be converted into landforms and if it get converted into landform there might be no water organisms the water organism will be completely washed off why it get washed off because there is no oxygen dissolved oxygen is not there that what is explained here in this drawing see here so nitrogen the phosphorus the this nutrient causes a increase in the so phytoplankton nitrogen and the phosphorus when it enters into the water body here what happened phytoplankton grows then a side here sedge grasses grows so here has a uh, nutrients or the pollutants goes on get dumped into the uh, water body such as a pond algal bloom starts forming algae will be started forming and here most of the organism die and that de decays the nutrient level increases increases so here water uh, content decreases decreases and it will get uh, transformed into a landform only one day so that what we call it as natural aging of a lake by the nutrients that is uh, uh, pollutant in other word we call nutrient because it enriches the plant growth as plants and animals grow rapidly and organic uh, uh, remains are deposited on the lake at the bottom so the lake grows shallower and it becomes water with the warm water organism and finally marsh plants take a root in the shallow and fill the original lake basin eventually the lake will get becomes a land one day that what we are trying to tell natural aging of a lake by a nutrient you see eutrophication that what we call it as eutrophication depending upon accumulation of the pollutant the increase in the nutrient in the lake or the water body only we call it as eutrophication depending on it depends upon the climate uh, size of the lake and other factors the eutrophication may be span thousands of years also it may take us here this was one day a lake after cultural eutrophication in times and decades what has happened sedimentation that is the you know, dumping of the nutrients and uh, pollutants increased increase the water level decreases and you can see it becomes a land and uh, on the land you can see the industry houses are being formed 
is what we call it as cultural eutrophication. However, pollutants like here, like effluents from industry, homes, uh, accelerate eutrophication, which we call it as cultural or accelerated eutrophication. So the prime uh, contaminants are nitrates and phosphates. They over stimulate the growth of the algae and it causes unsigly scum. I told you, you know, unslightly scum and unpleasant water. It will smell will be very bad and robs the water of the dissolved oxygen will not at all be there. If the water becomes like this, can we expect a dissolved oxygen here? All the organisms below would have been dead. Uh, it leads to the death of the other organism. So one day what happens as I told you as the time uh, decades the natural pond get converted into a land. This is what we call it as cultural or accelerated eutrophication. Okay one more reason for the eutrophication is usually in the industrial uh, places and all the heated waste water okay thermal uh, uh, what we call thermal waste waters from electricity generating units or from the industries uh, thermal power plants uh, they eliminates uh, it eliminates the uh, organism sensitive to high temperature some enzymatic activity will be completely stopped in the organism and it leads to the death of the organisms also. It may enhance the growth of the plants and fishes in extremely cold areas but only after causing damage to the indigenous flora and fauna. That means there might be uh, the, or some of the organism may get survived but some of the organism which are very sensitive to the heat okay or the uh, what it will to the high temperature it may die because they are used to grow uh, they are used to develop themselves in the cold water so suddenly when the water becomes heat or hot uh, death may occur so indigenous means the original flora and fauna of that water body may be lost so that what we call it as uh, eutrophication uh, I think so you have uh, understood the, the cause and effects of the water pollution. So the effects of water pollution I have told you uh, regarding the BOD, algal bloom, algal scum, then biomagnification and an important question example uh, had given the uh, DDT powder increasing in the uh, tropic level of a food chain that is biomagnification and the last topic was eutrophication. In eutrophication also we have uh, uh, understood cultural and accelerated eutrophication how a water body get converted into a land by the increased in the uh, pollutant or the adhering of the nutrients into the water body uh, that's all for today's video in uh, tomorrow's video we'll continue with the water pollution uh, that is a case study how uh, uh, some of the people have planned to get rid of this uh, water pollution also we'll study a type of story then we'll continue with the next pollution. Okay, thank you children.